So today we're gonna to talk about how to build your first developer portfolio in 2022. We're gonna talk about the three modes of doing this. So there's easy, medium, and hard, in my opinion. And we're also gonna talk about what should go in this portfolio and also some random other advice I have for you. So let's get into it. All right, so this is gonna be a great video for you if maybe you've built a few projects, you've gotten your skills up to the point where you're ready to start applying for jobs and you need a way to showcase the project you built, your skills, and a little bit about yourself. If this is your first time applying for jobs, and I assume it is because you saw the title and clicked on this video, then I would recommend that you go easy mode as far as this is concerned. And for me, easy mode in building a portfolio is using a site builder, building a simple one page website, and just getting something up on the internet fast. I recommend doing something easy and fast because you don't want the portfolio to become an impediment for applying for jobs. So you don't wanna spend a bunch of time building your portfolio when you could be focusing on getting your name out there and applying for a job. And so let's get down to the nitty gritty. You may be asking, what should I use to build my personal site if I'm going to use a site builder and I want to do it as easily as possible? I would recommend card.co. Card is a very simple way to build one page websites and it's only $20 a year. You can connect your own domain name and you get all these great features and millions of sites have been built on card. It's very reliable. I think even Beyonce has a card site. And so I'd recommend card for your first developer portfolio if you wanna do it easily. With card, you basically just pick a template. You pick what kind of elements you want to be in your site and you can go ahead and change the copy to suit your name and your story. So it's very easy. But maybe you want your site to be a little bit more personalized or you want a little bit more in the way of features or you have a design background and you want to really showcase your design skills as well, then I would recommend something that I would call medium difficulty, something like Webflow. Now, Webflow would actually be kind of hard mode for me because it's a lot like a design program like Figma. I know a lot of designers use it as a way of building websites or they can actually showcase their design skills. So unless you kind of fit that demographic, then I probably would just advocate going with card. But if you want fancier features, then go with Webflow. You can kind of look those up. Webflow has extra features that card doesn't have. For example, it has a CMS, it has marketing and SEO stuff. You can write custom CSS, stuff like that. And so if that interests you, then maybe I'd advocate Webflow. But for me, it would take more time to get a Webflow site up and running. And so if the goal is applying for jobs and getting something up as soon as possible, then I probably wouldn't go Webflow. But just thought I'd throw it out there for consideration. And then of course that brings us to hard mode, which is rolling your own site. I definitely don't think I would advocate for this for someone that's building their first portfolio site, unless you want the portfolio site itself to be part of your portfolio. So basically if you wanna say, hey, this site is also an example of something that I could build. I built it with React or whatever the technologies were as a way of showcasing your skills with those technologies, then I think that's great. You could also use something like Gatsby, which does server-side rendered pages in React and is a little bit better for stuff like SEO. A lot of people use it for marketing websites and personal websites, and that is what my personal website is built on but you can really pick anything. Again, I just wanna reiterate, if the goal is speed, then this probably isn't gonna be your best bet, but if you want to play around, if you wanna have maximum control, if you wanna showcase your skills in a particular technology, then this is probably going to be a good option for you. Keep in mind that if you go with this option, then you're also going to have to worry about hosting. So I would recommend either GitHub Pages or Netlify for a site like this. All right, let's talk about what should go in this site. So it's probably a no brainer, but the first thing you should consider putting in this particular website are your projects. You want to tailor the projects you put in this portfolio for the kind of roles that you're applying for. So for example, if I'm a React developer and I'm applying for React jobs, ideally the majority of the projects in my portfolio would have React in them so that I could say, hey, look at all these things that I built with React. Makes sense, right? Another thing that's important to put in your portfolio or personal website is your story, a little bit about you. Who are you? What makes you tick? Why did you decide to do development? What are your hobbies? What are you interested in? Basically, what makes you different than every other person? I think that's a pretty core component. And if I were an interviewer reviewing personal websites, which I've done a lot of, 
The more you can make yourself stand out in any way, the better. You also want some contact information on your personal website. So if I find you and I wanna reach out to you, how do I do that, right? So email address, whatever you're comfortable sharing online. You can even create your own email address that's tied to the domain of your website, which is pretty cool. Or there's a feature in Google domains where you can do email forwarding. So I have that set up where if you email, peter at peterelbaum.com. That's the address of my personal website. It will forward emails to a different address. So if you don't wanna go through the hassle of setting up email and paying for that with Google anyway, then you can just set up the forwarding and take care of it that way. You'll also want to link any social media that you're comfortable with. So definitely your LinkedIn, but maybe your Twitter because Twitter is big in the tech field and anything else you think is relevant. And definitely since you're a developer, you want to link your GitHub as well. All right, that's what should go in it. Let's talk about some random other advice. So when it comes to projects, if you're a coding bootcamp graduate, you wanna be really intentional about what you put in your portfolio. The reason for this is that you're probably hitting the job Job market at the same time as all your other cohort mates and all you guys have built the same exact project. So if possible, you want to spend some time building your own projects. And so that way you won't have the same portfolio or the same projects in your portfolio as every other single person in your bootcamp. This one takes time, but it's definitely worth it. And I think it's a really great way to stand out, especially if you can build an app that you can use in real life that solves a real problem. I've talked a bunch about that in the past, but the long story short is it's a lot easier to build a project if it's solving a real problem. I find that to be more exciting. You also want to craft your narrative. If you're a non-traditional person, why do did you switch from some other career into software engineering? You want to craft a narrative that makes sense so that people have an idea of, is this person just randomly switching or is there a greater motivation behind that? So think about your story, think about crafting your narrative and think about telling your story in a way that makes sense to somebody that doesn't know you at all. The last thing I would say is learn in public. So you want to document everything you're learning and doing so you build up some kind of following and credibility and people just love to see that. So either on a blog or on Twitter, just document what you're learning, what you're doing, what you're seeing in your job search. And if you continue that for a few years, then it will pay massive dividends. There's a big blog post on it that I will link below called Learn in Public, and I recommend that you read that. So that's it. That's my advice for building your first developer portfolio in 2022. Let me know if this was helpful. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment. So consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.